Hi folks, this is Pastor Dave Grisham here with For God and Country Ministries. And if you want to donate to our ministry, you can uh, go to my cash app. It's dollar sign for God and Country Dave. Uh, dollar sign for God and Country Dave. That's all lowercase, all one word. Just got finished preaching at the only abortion clinic left in Mississippi. It's a women's clinic in uh, Jackson, Mississippi. Met a very nice uh, Christian lady there named Pam, who was out there trying to hand out tracks to the people going into the clinic, and um, and she was uh, also uh, trying to witness to them as well. And uh, when I showed up in my um, when I showed up in my my Grim Reaper outfit, it was uh, it created quite the stir amongst all the death scorts. This is the, one of the only ones I've ever preached at that had um the death escorts and um they were um they were very uh excited to see somebody they said no one had ever shown up there in a grim reaper outfit before so i was the first one <laughs> the only one that's ever done it and um they of course they they treated it like it was a new toy you know and they came over and started asking me questions and all this kind of stuff and it really gave me a great opportunity to witness to the death scorts so i spent a lot of time actually conversing with the death scorts and um and i was pretty gentle with them you know i was I, i'm not angry at these people god is god's angry with the wicked every day but i wanted to let them know that they could get saved and they could you know have their sins forgiven and come to christ and so I did a lot of witnessing to the death scorts. We debated a lot about abortion, you know, and and uh, it was a great time. And and I tried a new technique. And this was um, this was very interesting because I, the reason it just the idea just kind of popped into my head. Uh, normally, I just stand there very quietly in this outfit, and people are very leery of it, you know, because it's very intimidating. Quite honestly, they they see it and it's and it's you know they can't see your face uh the dark hood over your head and um and it's it's pretty intimidating and it's very dark and black and and uh and it, it's kind of scary in a way but it's meant to be because death is supposed to be scary and so uh the message of course death stands with Planned Parenthood of course that was not a Planned Parenthood but I said doesn't matter you're all the same you know doesn't matter whatever um, but I tried a new technique today, which worked really well. It, it had my, it had the intended effect. Um, there was a woman who pulled her car in to the parking area and parked very close to the gate where Pam and I were standing. And of course the death scorts all went over there to her, you know, to try to help her get in so that we didn't give her a hard time or anything, you know, and Pam is a very quiet person, so she wasn't going to raise her voice or anything and and I had been really quiet up to this point too uh, I was just you know talking to them in a normal tone of voice and everything I was not open air preaching or anything like that and as this woman came walking by just a few feet from the gate I suddenly jumped and I pointed my finger and I said death awaits those inside death this is what they deal here and i just like that and and she just jumped oh like this you know and the death scorts are like oh my gosh and they all jumped and it and they all freaked out because i suddenly lunged and i said death really loud you know is inside and and uh, they completely freaked out over that so it was great i did that two or three more times and while the death scorts didn't freak out the second or third time I did it, every single woman that walked by reacted the same way. They were like, ah, and you, I thought they were going to run away. You know, they almost, they almost turned and ran, you know, they were, it startled them so bad. Um, but I wanted to get their attention to let them know that they were, um, they were not escaping the eyes of God, you know? And, um, later on I decided that I wanted to talk and I have an opportunity to witness to and rebuke the owner of the clinic. So I told the death courts, I said, um, now, you know, technically under the law, under trespassing laws, I can walk right onto the property here and uh, and you can't say anything because you don't work here. You're a, you're a volunteer. You don't have the authority 
uh, to tell anyone to leave off the property. It has to be a recognized agent of the property. It has to be someone who works there, like a manager or an employee, someone who has authority over the property. But as a volunteer, you don't have any authority. You're just there to help. You're not on the payroll. And they were like, no, 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 we can. I said, no, you, you, you don't have any authority. And some of the death scores said, yeah, you're right. We don't have the authority. But they're watching on the cameras, you know. So I decided to push the limits because I wanted to witness or get a chance to rebuke the, uh, the owner. So I knew that would draw them out. So I stepped across the line. I tiptoed first, just messing with them, leaned on the wall because you're not supposed to touch the wall. That didn't do it. So I just walked onto the property whilst they were trying to escort somebody across, you know, right in front of us. And that got them all in a tizzy. And then, and then, the, then they went and got the, the, then one of the escorts came out and said, you've been given your first official. I said, no, you don't have the authority to tell me that. I'm not recognizing it. I'm gonna go on that property again, unless I get officially warned. So I was threatening to go on the property, see? So finally the owner came out and she was mad oh i got this on video too she was so angry she came out screaming at me this is your second official warning i said no this is my first official warning they don't have any authority you do but they don't so i i've been officially warned i said but you are receiving your first official warning for trespassing in the wombs of god and you better repent of that you better Stop stepping across that line and get off God's property and stop murdering those babies. And at this point, she flew into a rage and started cussing me and screaming at me. And I just kept yelling back to her that she needed to repent, that she was she was going to go to hell. She was a Jezebel whore. And uh, <laughs> she, she went off. She went completely berserk. And um, so I definitely got under her skin. Uh, she definitely got a rebuke. She got a rebuke. So it was a very successful day. I had good, calm conversations with the death scorts. Um, a lot of the women that came in, you know, I told them, hey, you don't, you know, you don't murder your baby in there. Please don't murder your baby. And, um, and the usual stuff, you know. But uh, I did startle some of the women that were going in there because I lunged. I did At that point, I didn't step on the property. I was just on the sidewalk. And I just lunged and pointed my finger and screamed, duh! And um, that startled them. And then I stepped on the property when I wanted to rebuke the owner. And they fell for it, hook, line, and sinker. Cha-ching, worked like a charm. So anyway, um, I just um, I wanted to let you know what happened. Uh, <laughs> And now I am leaving uh, Jackson. Right now I'm on the highway. I'm on my way back to Texas. And um, I think our next mission is going to be preaching at um, Texas Tech later uh, this next week. So I will be preaching at Texas Tech. And um, hopefully that, um, uh, that will go well. And, uh, and then after that, it'll be Mardi Gras. And of course, after Mardi Gras, immediately thereafter, it will be Iditarod in Alaska with Jesse Morrell. I'm going with Brother Reuben and uh, John, John Williams and a bunch of other, uh, other guys to Mardi Gras. Uh, Mark and a bunch of other guys, we're gonna go to Mardi Gras. And, um, and then spring break, uh, be there with a bunch of other brothers. Uh, Ed Descanio, uh, J.K. and his wife, and uh, and several others down there, and um, and Scott Crawford. Scott Crawford's going to go. So anyway, so this is going to be a, a very busy month. I want to thank you guys for the donations. I just got another donation. Thank you very much. God bless you. Every little bit helps. It doesn't matter how big or how small it is. It really helps, guys. It really does. I'm spending a lot of money on gas, and I'm trying to save money by sleeping in my truck. I don't want to waste your money. I want to take whatever money you donate, and I want to use it for the kingdom of God. You know, I want to buy banners, or I want to buy hats, or hoodies, or, you know, uh, or I want to buy fuel and food and gospel tracts. We have spent 
almost $400 on gospel tracks just for spring break and the Iditarod. We've spent almost 400 bucks on the, getting these really nice gospel tracks so people will keep them like a souvenir. They won't throw them away. And uh, and so we're, and, and each one has a message, a gospel written on the back and a really beautiful picture on the front. So I'll show you those when they come in. They're, they're being printed right now and they should be shipped pretty soon. I'll get online, I'll make another video and I'll show you guys what they look like, what your money that you've been donating has bought. Because, you know, like I said, we don't waste your money and I'll show you exactly what your money buys. And this is what we're doing. We're not doing this for ourselves. We're not buying, you know, diamond earrings and Rolex watches and jet airplanes like other people are doing. No, your money goes right out on the road and goes out here to preach the gospel. So thank you very much for your donations. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And if you do want to donate, it's a uh, dollar sign. Uh, my cash app is dollar sign for God and Country Dave. Dollar sign for God and Country Dave. Thank you very much. And I appreciate your prayers. Uh, pr Pam prayed over me before I left. And I prayed over her because we need more laborers in that field. Uh, she was the only one out there, but she says there's usually one person there all the time. But what we need is a hundred people, a hundred people a day out there at that abortion clinic in Jackson, Mississippi. Brethren, they murder people, they murder babies every day at that abortion clinic, every single day. People from Texas are going there because of the heartbeat bill. They've got people from other neighboring states and as we got to get this one in Mississippi shut down. So God bless those guys that are there all the time. The Mississippi street preachers, God bless you guys for going out there. I wish I had seen you today. I wish I could have met you and hugged you and shaken your hand. Uh, maybe I'll come back again because I'd like to go back to that clinic again sometime. And all the death scorts there knew my name. They knew who I was. They knew, <laughs> they knew who I was. You're one of Reuben's boys, Reuben Israel's boys. I said, yeah, that's true. I am. So uh, anyway, uh, God bless you guys. And thank you for your donations. Thank you for your prayers. And uh, thank you for going out on the streets in your own cities. And uh, if you're not, I strongly encourage you to. Please, we need the help. We need the help. We need to help. We need God to save America. And this is how we're trying to do it. Um, God bless you guys. Y'all have a good day.